how do you feel about what, what's going on here today? Well, um, obviously, I think disagreement with the proposed rule change, but not opposed to what's happening today. All of these kind of things, they help us. It keeps people engaged. It keeps people active, and it gives people an opportunity to get active and get engaged if they haven't already in a way that's perhaps not so um, intimidating, for lack of a better word, as, it, as um, you know, getting engaged on the mountain in the time of resistance. So uh, I think this, this is to our advantage. It allows our people to come together again and showcase our strength, our knowledge, our unity, and our commitment. Um, and again, the vast majority, if 90 to 95%, maybe even more, are in opposition to the proposed rule change because we understand that this change is directly targeting the Kukia Imauna protectors on Mauna Wakea and trying to get them off the mountain, trying to make their efforts or our efforts to protect the mountain more difficult than it already is and, and really to assist TMT in getting up the mountain to desecrate it. So it's good for the people. Uh, you know, it's yet to be seen if they'll listen to the people this time. But if, if the people do have any say, any impact on the decision that should be made, then we should know what the decision is. And that's to oppose this proposed route change. So they're, they're trying to kind of, I think, expand the, you could call it a field of battle. Uh-huh. Even bigger stakes to distract, to bring it onto their ground. And I noticed TMT and, you know, this whole consortium, they, they're trying to box people into stereotypical boxes so it can be sold to like, uh, their investors and sold all over the world so that they've got you contained. Mm -hmm. But I noticed people in this movement are really trying to be themselves and look at the bigger picture and not be contained. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. yeah you, you can't contain this, this movement to say it's strictly political, it's strictly cultural, it's strictly spiritual, it's strictly religious. It's strictly environmental. It's all of those things, um, and we have people coming from all kind of different backgrounds. Because again, like we've been like we've been saying from the very beginning, we are not an official group. We're not an organization. We're simply a, individuals who have come together to work together because we have the same goal in mind, and that's to protect Mauna Wakea. Now, everybody may have different reasons, or we may share share um, similar reasons and then have different reasons from others. And I think that's the beauty of it, is that we're able to cover a bunch of different aspects. You cannot box us in and say, These are, this is a group of you know, religious people. This is a group of, of political activists. This is a group of Kanaka, of Hawaiians, non-Hawaiians, people of Hawaii, people of the world who understand the crucial need to truly preserve and protect our natural resources. And again, to protect our rights as a people and to protect our sacred places, places that we know are sacred, regardless of who wants to recognize it or not. We know as a people, it's sacred. Um, and so we protect those things. So again, they can't, they can't box us in. We're, we're coming from all kinds of different angles. We're coming from different perspectives, but all with one goal, protect Mauna Wakea. Okay. I remember a soccer team one, I used to say that he liked debating with people who lived their philosophy. He didn't just like people who just debated to win and just to perfect the argument. Mm -hmm. So, in, in a way, um, you guys are living your philosophy and being like true philosophers, as you would say. So that's why they listen to you. Yeah. Because you're actually living your philosophy. And, and it's an education opportunity. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're uh, more than willing more than happy to engage in a friendly debate, in a productive debate, um, assuming that both sides can come with an open mind, open the o, and, and listen, and truly try to understand where the other side is coming from. And for me, I understand where they're coming from. They love their science. They want to practice their research. Mauna Kea is the most ideal place in the world for them to do that. It doesn't make it the right place. So what, not, not, what we need to get them to understand is where we're coming from. Because again, I can acknowledge them, I can acknowledge what they're trying to do, right on. They just chose, as my t-shirt would say, the wrong place, wrong time, wrong people. And, but they can't seem to comprehend where we're coming from. And so, um, but it doesn't mean we're going to give up. You know, even Gandhi, in all of the struggles, he still continued dialogue and communication with the opposition. And people would give him flack for it. And he said, one day I'm going to convince them. And um, that's, you know, we're going to try. We're going to convince them. And, and if we're not going to convince them, then we're going to beat them.
and I was, I was going to ask, uh, back to the science question, I mean, Hawaiian science, as one of my friends once, once said to me, but I, it's links of logic that no reason, and basically, it, it's, it's just like science, but it, it doesn't have the same dichotomies of nature being separate from humanity, mm -hmm. nature being separate from society. Hawaiian science may have dichotomies, but not similar to that. People try to include everything, and, and I was talking to Mike Lee earlier about Pono and truth, it's mm -hmm. based on that, and then it, it tries to make it whole. But the dichotomies in uh, Western science, they've forgotten, I guess, that root mm -hmm. that even they have before with their science. Yeah. Well, then, you know, they keep saying, you know, the science and the culture can coexist, it can coexist. It's, it's really, when it comes to us, it's, it's not an attempt to, co science was our culture. It was, it was really the, the foundation of our culture. The ability, our, 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 our culture was formed when we got here to Hawaii. How did we get here to Hawaii? Through science, through astronomy, through the understanding of the swells and the winds and the tides and the rising of the sun, the setting of the, and the rising of the moon and the stars and their, and their patterns. I mean, the ability to build a canoe out of wood and stone and sailed across the greatest ocean in the world in a time where most people thought the world was flat and or couldn't swim. I mean, that's science, you know? The lo'i, the lo'kui'a, the hales we built, the, the, the structures, the civilization, that's, that's all scientific. It's just not their kind of science. Um, you know, I mean, and, and we didn't need to utilize the tools that they utilize for that sciences and we did not need to desecrate land. Our sciences really were not only uh, something that would preserve life, but really that could create life, the va'a. It brought us here and we created a new life here, a new civilization. You know, the, lo the lo'i, the loko'i'a, that sustained life, it fed the people. So science and culture, the whole coexisting thing, I mean, science is our culture. Culture is our science. Um, it's, it's basically one and the same, I think. So again, they're just coming from a different perspective. They can't understand, they can't grasp, they can't comprehend where we come from, where we are, and where we need to go. They can only see, they only want to see 13 billion years away, you know, to the beginning of time. And um, nothing wrong with that. But don't destroy what we have now to go back in time and see what was there before. You know, take care of this place. Yeah, like, like Hawaiian forest, yeah, before you look into space, Malama this place. And that's something that they failed miserably to do, whether that be the state, the DLNR, the University of Hawaii, and TMT. Regardless of all of these efforts, so-called efforts that they've made to, um, to better their relationship, it's, like, it's just like, it's like, you know, giving someone candy before you beat them up. Does it make beating them up any, any less bad? No, it's still, it's still an issue, uh, it's still wrong, and they're still trying to desecrate the mountain. So, scientific perspectives, again, just, we can understand where they're coming from, I don't think they can understand where we're coming from. And also, it's, any culture, even Hawaiian culture, could be influenced by kala, and money system, which makes a relationship with you real simplistic, and deals on a kind of narrow spectrum of other kind of relationships, like bartering, influence like relationships, and, uh -huh. and it deals with a lot more. So sometimes people get distracted by kala, mm -hmm. and by oh, yeah. And so I see that with this TMT, people are getting big time distracted, big mm -hmm. eyes with the big 1.4, it kind of blinds them to really the other relationships that are being yeah. shortcut. And, and that's something that, again, has been instilled within us from the time of our kupuna, from 1893, after the legal overthrow of the, of the, the government, you know. We care not, we couldn't care less about the money. What we care about, what we're satisfied with, is the stones, the land that which feeds us. And that, I think that mindset is still um, persisting today. And maybe stronger, uh, maybe not than ever before, but stronger than, than a long time. Um, and, and again, we we come from a generation that has been provided Hawaiian language education, Hawaiian culture education, and even the ability to continue on to higher levels of education and get a degree in Hawaiian language or Hawaiian studies. And so, we understand these things. And we know the words of our kupuna to be true. You know, Papa Mau, P.I. Lu, before he took Okura'a to uh, Kaiki, he said, you know, if I have courage, it's because I have remembered the teachings of my ancestors. 
And, and that's what gives us the courage to do what we're doing today, to continue to what we're going to do you know, tomorrow and next week and next month and next year is the teachings of our ancestors. We've been taught those things. We've remembered those things. We're going to act upon those things. Money, never, ate, never eaten money in my life. Never have. But I have eaten from this land. I will continue to eat from this land. And money will never replace that, no matter how many dollar bills they want to throw in our face. And being there up on, uh, on our walk here is an expression of, of your, your nature and of greater nature. Mm -hmm. So you're there expressing who you are. Exactly. In all these times from October 7th till uh, March yeah. and now June 24th, the last time. We're, in, we're being who we are, we're being who we need to be. You know, we live in a system that really tries to make us something that we're not and something that we really cannot be. We are who we are, we cannot change it. You know, mo'oku au is mo'oku au hao. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, cannot change that. And, and we're up there expressing what I believe to be aloha aina o ya i'o. A true, not just a true love for the land, but a true patriotic love for the land. Understanding the relationship we have to the land. It's genealogical, and then in this new day and age, ever since 1843, there's a political relationship to it as well. And, and a nationalistic relationship to it and understanding that Mauna Kea sitting in the Ahupua of Ka'ohe in the Moku of Hamakua, government lands designated by the Hawaiian Kingdom 1848, never ceded to America. Seized, never ceded. So when you understand that too, then you have another uh, responsibility and that's to protect national lands. But, but I mean, it's, it's all of it. It's not one or the other. It's to protect the national lands, to protect the mountain that which we know to be sacred, a mountain that we know uh, shares the same genealogy or we share the same genealogy as that mountain. So it's aloha aina, oya i'o, truth. You know, we know the truth and the truth is so powerful that it will, it will force you in a sense, it will empower you to do what needs to be done and it will set our people free. Uh, and I was going to ask you, would you like to say anything on what has happened recently, like on the 24th or any other day? I think, I think the 24th, I think June 24th was a beautiful day. It was another victory for the people of Hawaii. Not just Hawaiians, but all people of Hawaii. You know, if, if we truly love Hawaii, we love Hawaii for what it is, not what we want it to be. You know, we love Hawaii for what it should be. And Mauna Kea exemplifies that, I think. You know, it's a, you have the telescopes out there, but when you're up there, you can, you can feel connected. You can, you can, you can feel senses what it, what it used to be like here in Hawaii, in other areas, the, the calm, the quiet, you know, the, the stillness and all, and all of that. Um, but it was, it was beautiful because there was no public call made. TMT came out with a statement on a Saturday saying they're going to resume construction on Wednesday and by 5 o'clock Tuesday, there was hundreds of people on the mountain and there was hundreds the next morning. And we came together as a people without any designated leadership, without any you know, true organization and preparation, what we had was Aloha Aino Oya Io. And it brought us together. And we understood that, they, that we were there for a cause that is much, much greater than any one individual or any group of individuals. It's, it's greater than us. And so uh, I think it's a testament to the activation that we're seeing, the mobilization we're seeing, the unification that we're seeing of our people, which I think, I think we're in the greatest activation, mobilization and unification of Hawaiian people since 1897. And, and that was a testament, that was, that was a, a showing of that. And, and we did it, you know, we stopped another day of a $1.4 billion project. And after June 24th, when I look at the, the make-believe scoreboard hanging on the wall, I see Ku Kia Imauna 3 and TMT 0. And so we have no reason to believe that we cannot be victorious because every experience that we've had up to this point shows us that we can be and we will be. And all these, all these different things are expressions of people all over the world. It's just, just uh, of a continuum that's gone from long ago. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're here, you know, and we quote and we look back to our ancestors, but we can also look around the world and see that we're not the only ones struggling. We've been visited by native peoples from all over America, even other places of the world who not only uh, understand what we're going through, but are experiencing the same things. They're going through the same exact struggle. It's just a different people in a different place. So it's, it's not just the Hawaii movement. This is something that, again, people around the world 
can understand and are experiencing themselves and, and they truly support what we're doing and we'd like for them to know that we truly support what they're doing and, and let us all be victorious in the end. Let the land be victorious. That's what it's about. It's about aloha aina and he ka aina, he kawa ke kanaka. The land is the chief, the people is the servant. Let's bring that mana'o back to life and, and make it true again. And let's start here in Hawaii. Mahalo. Mahalo nui. Appreciate it. Mahalo.